Welcome. I am Mark Wilson, director of the Caroline Marshall Drawn Center for the Arts and Humanities in the College of Liberal Arts at Auburn University. I'm here at Pebble Hill, the historic Scott Yarborough House in Auburn. Next month, we planned to offer a public program and exhibition on quilting in Alabama, featuring a historic quilt housed at the Alabama Department of Archives and History that was made by Mary Strudwick Yarbrough and her sister in this house, completed in 1959 with pieces of cloth dating back to 1841. We look forward to rescheduling the quilt symposium but in the meantime, we have the good fortune of holding this conversation on human resilience in troubling times, stories from Alabama quilter Sylvia Stevens. Sylvia is the daughter of Moselle Benson, nationally renowned quilter from Lee County, Alabama, who received a National Heritage Fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts and a Folk Arts Apprenticeship from the Alabama State Council on the Arts. You will see in the comments section on Facebook links to articles and videos on Miss Benson that you will find interesting and instructive. And even though we are unable right now to go live to you, we still welcome your questions for Miss Stevens in the comments section as well. But before I introduce Sylvia, we would love for you to have an introduction to Moselle Benson through this brief video from Alabama Public Television. I first got here material. If it's a long strip of material, most of the time, I'll lay it to the end on the side. So like, the bed got two sides, so I put one strip on one side with another side. And I build from there. I may start in the center with just the center piece. And then, and, and when I get, get the line, the length that I want, I just keep building on it. I don't use a lot of tape measure. I use scissors a bit just to clip it. I take my length, and I'm five nine, and that's my measurement. I stand on the end of the quilt that I'm making, and I raise it above my head. You got a footage down there to put it on your foot, and you also got to put it in here. You don't necessarily have to put it over your head. It, that's the way I measure it. So I sew the bottom to the uh, the bottom to the top. You put the two layers. The, uh, you put the two layers together, and you put between those two layers. At one time, my mama used the real cotton from the field. I don't make nothing fancy. It got to take me forever to cut it up and another forever to strain it up and another forever to sew it up. with all the different colors of fabric or whatever, whatever whatever you choose and then using the three layers the top piece that's pieced together uh the batting that gives it warmth and adds weight to it it's not a quilt no need on it well and the, the back, back. yeah uh -huh. but if it's a wall hanging you don't need to put that in there but you can if you want to okay but for a quilt for, for a quilt you need fabric you got you need the inside that's the warmth of the quilt yes And now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Sylvia Stevens. She's a fourth generation quilter, and she was taught to sew by her mother as a young child using the family's Singer treadle sewing machine. She's a graduate of Auburn University and Troy University, and she served as a commissioned officer in the United States Air Force and retired in the DC area following her final duty assignment at the Pentagon. She is an apprentice quilter and Alabama community scholar for the Alabama Folklife Association. Welcome, Sylvia. Hello, Dr. Wilson. Thank you for inviting me to speak to uh, quilters and quilt lovers about Moselle Benson and her quilting le legacy uh, from the vantage point from the vantage point of just talking about human resilience and troubling times, stories from an Alabama quilter. And I'm not an Alabama quilter, but I'm talking about my mother, Moselle Stevens Murph 
Benson. And the video you just watched was uh, taken, this was the name of it, What You're Crafting, a mother and her daughter's quilting video. But the video was done in my mother's uh, studio in uh, Waverly, Alabama, during the time when I was living with her. Uh, she taught me how to make quilts there, and I can tell you that I am just delighted that I uh, learned to quote from my mother um, and, and can talk about her, her life and her legacy today. Uh, thinking about the quilt that we just saw, we, we know that a quilt, or the, the common thinking about a quilt is that it's, it's three layers of uh, fabric that's stitched together, so it becomes like one item, and that item is a quilt. And what we're going to do today is to look at my mother's life, and look at the life of Moselle, Stevens, Murph, Benson, uh, in, in three layers. We're going to look at her life as a, a master artist, a master quilter. Uh, after that, the next layer is uh, concerning the time when I was her apprentice. And then that third layer of Moselle Benson's life will have to do with uh, quilting through the years. And we're going to look at five generations of quilters. But before we do that, uh, let's just take a look at the word resilience so we all have an understanding of what it means. And basically, um, it means to recover or to resume or to return to something uh, that had happened before. Um, these definitions that you're looking at here came right out of the free dictionary, the online dictionary. Uh, and the one that stood out to me most, and probably because it had to do with the resilience of human beings, is the bottom one, the fourth one. Resilience has to do with strength, toughness, adaptability, hardness, and those were some of the qualities uh, that I saw in my mother. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, now that we've shared that <laughs> uh, meaning of resilience and have uh, some idea of what it means, we can apply that as we talk about my mother, Moselle Stevens Murphy Benson. And that name is to give honor to my mother and and all of my uh, extended family, the Stevens family, and my brothers and sisters. Mama uh, had 10 of us, I'm her oldest, and uh, all of those names uh, bring us all together as a family. As you can see on this slide, mom was selected as a 2001 National Heritage fellow in the United States of America. And this picture shows mom in her bedroom, which is where she made her quilts, in Opelika, Alabama. The cross that's in her, the quilt that's in her lap is called Three Crosses. And that quilt is currently at the Julie Collins Smith Museum uh, there in Auburn, Alabama. This award that my mother received was absolutely amazing to us. I came to appreciate the meaning of receiving the award. And if you look at that last, the statement at the bottom of the slide that says the National Endowment of the Arts National Heritage Fellowship is the highest form of recognition for the folk and the traditional arts by the United States government. Once I understood that, I just was amazed. This is Moselle Benson from Waverly, Alabama, Opelika, Alabama, and she has received this honor from the United States. We were so proud of her. I was especially proud of her once I understood what it, uh, what it really meant. And you can also see that this award that she was, received was in 2001, and she made her way to Washington, D.C. in September 2001, 10 days after 9-11. So just think about that. It's 10 days after the terrorist bombing. 
and people in our country were going through some of the same things that we're going through now. Uh, people and their families were faced with difficult travel situations. They were concerned about their personal uh, and national safety. People were uncertain about their daily lives and their future. Uh, people were experiencing mourning and, and in a sense, searching for uh, reaffirmation. And that's kind of where we are today. But what we have to remember is we made it through that time and we will do it again during this time. And what will it take to help us get through it? Resilience. Think back to what resilience calls from us and we will get through it. And my mother did. She told me that she prayed <laughs> about whether or not she would uh, come to Washington to receive her uh, award along with uh, 12 other recipients. And she decided she would, but she decided also not to fly. My brother, Michael, drove mama uh, to Washington, D.C. for the celebration, uh, for the uh, receptions and, and interviews to uh, accept the honor and to celebrate uh, receiving it. Uh, today, um, we have to do kind of the same thing, is we have to push through what has happened uh, to keep our lives moving, to recognize these as troubling times, and to get through it the best we can. That's what happened uh, with my mother, uh, when she made the decision to come to Washington, D.C., and I'm so glad she did. Uh, uh, when she came, um, of course, I was there at some of the events. Um, two of my sisters were there. Uh, three of my mother's grandchildren were there. Uh, and one of her friends, a longtime friend who was a VISTA volunteer, was, was also there to receive the award. You can see on the um, this the center um, award was from the National uh, Endowment for the Arts, but basically it says that Moselle Benson, a master artist, I mean, I just thought she was a quilter, but now my mother is a master artist and a master quilter, and she contributed to the shaping of artistic traditions, that's what it says on her certificate, and to preserving the cultural diversity of the United States. The letter from President uh, George W. Bush on the left basically echoes the same thing, as does the uh, Senate rev uh, resolution uh, prepared by and posted by Senate, Senator Ted uh, Little. But this award and these uh, documents that document uh, the the, the um, presentation and the recognition uh, of my mother just made us all so proud. We were proud of the family. Auburn and Opelika and Waverly were all proud. The state of Alabama was proud. And I also learned a lot about my mother uh, during um, my time uh, uh, going to see her receive uh, these awards. And one of the things that I learned, well, there are a lot of things that I learned, but one of the things that I learned that I was just unaware of that my mother was sent by uh, the Smithsonian Institution and the US Department of State to four African countries as her representative, as, as their representative uh, from the United States of America. On the left, you see a quilt, uh, a Moselle Benson quilt that is in the collection of Dr. Maude Wallman. And on the right, you see another quilt uh, that's in the collection of uh, uh, John David Scully. These two quilts represent the people who were uh, friends of my mother and instrumental in her life uh, becoming a nationally known and acknowledged uh, quilter. 
uh, Dr. Wallman and uh, Dr. Scully remain lifelong friends of my mother. And it was during this ceremony in Washington, D.C., where I learned that my mother had 10 children and none of us were quilters. And when I heard her say that, I thought, well, that's got to change. And it did change. I became an apprentice quilter to my mother. This is another long story and I'm gonna make it pretty brief, but basically <laughs> what, it, what happened was my mama kept asking me to come quote home uh, to Alabama and I'm like, mama, I spent all my life trying to get away from uh, Alabama. Why would I wanna come back? But it worked out so that I made the decision to move from Washington, D.C. Uh, first to Opelika, uh, and then eventually to live with my mother in her home uh, in Waverly. And the picture that you see here is at the Waverly house, uh, and you can see sunflowers and her garden in the background. And this also is a testament to the resiliency of my mother. She always had a garden, and she was always sharing and giving to other people uh, from that garden. And that's when I, I realized, I mean, I kind of knew it, but I just realized my mother was a giver. Uh, she looked out for her neighbors. Uh, uh, she checked on them every now, and, uh, every now and then. And that's kind of where we are today. That same attitude of caring for each other and getting through this is a, is a symbol of resilience that I, I picked up on uh, when I was living with my mother. But anyway, once I got back to Alabama, I started traveling with mama <laughs> to go to some of her quilt shows and workshops. And during one of those uh, workshops, uh, Joey Brackner from the Alabama State Council on the Arts stopped by Moselle's workstation and was chatting with her. And he asked her, Moselle, when are you going to teach somebody how to make those quilts? And she said, I'll have to do that when I have time. So they chatted, Joey walked on, and after Joey left, I said, Mama, can you teach me? <laughs> and she said to me, Sylvia, I have to teach you when I have time. I said, I, we can work it out, we can work it out. So when Joey came back, I asked him, uh, could my mother teach me? Could I become her apprentice under their apprenticeship program? And he said, yes, he gave me his card. And uh, we talked, he sent me the application, I filled it out, and for three consecutive years, I became an apprentice to my mother under the Alabama State Council on the Arts uh, Folk Arts Apprenticeship Program. And this picture also here showed, it came from um, uh, the book, Carry On, celebrating 20 years of the Alabama Folk Arts Apprenticeship. And this picture is on page 10 of, of that book. Uh, in 2012, uh, Mama went on to Quilting Heaven, and I know that because I had a cousin who called me and said, Sylvia, I dreamed about your mama and my mama, and they were sisters, my mama's oldest sister. They were in heaven quilting. We had a big laugh about that, but that's where Mama is, and I'm sure she's watching over us today while she's stitching her ties into her quilt. After I became Mama's Apprentice, I just, I just loved it. And I just started uh, visiting with her when she wasn't in her garden or when it was raining or when it was too cold. Or sometimes I would call her on the phone. And I learned to make quilts from my mother by her telling me and sometimes showing me, as you saw in the video, how to put a quilt together. And what you're gonna see next are a few quilts that my mother and I made, quote, made together or collaborated on together. <laughs> and I, um, I am I'm happy. This first one I call Mama's Red Stash because Mama suggested that the first quilt that I should make should be a strip quilt. And I learned from uh, hearing some of her other interviews that that was one of the first things that she did. She made strip quilts. So she allowed me to go to her house and 
look into every bag, every stack, every box, every closet, every storage spot that she had inside and outside the house to find materials to make that quilt. Well, I like red. I like red and white. So I just pulled out any fabric that had red or red and white in it and put together this quilt called Mama's Red Stash. And if you look under the quilt at that, those letter the parenthesis tbq quilters will probably know what this means to be quilted that quilt is still not finished but that's another story and another quilt and <laughs> we'll talk about that story another time <laughs> another quilt that i made uh where i really needed mama's help and it was a lesson it was one of those uh unforgettable quilting uh lessons and it was to make a cross there are a couple of, of stories in here. This quilt in the center I call Holy, Holy, Holy. The idea or the inspiration came to me when I attended uh, a quilt exhibit for the Quilters of G's Bend at Auburn University. I believe it was in 2005. And there were about 20, 30 quilts in the exhibit, but there were only two that had circles. And I was, for some reason, drawn to those two. And I met one of the uh, quilters from G's Ben who knew about those two circles, uh, about those two quilts that had circles in them. And the one that fascinated me most, I think, was the one that had about, I think maybe 90 circles in it. And they were whip stitched around every circle. And I remember thinking there's gotta be a better way to make uh, a circle in a quilt. And that night, Sitting in my preacher's chair in my bedroom, I dreamed a way to make a circle in a quilt. And I just kept making quilt blocks with circles in them. And those circles that are in this quilt came from, from that dream. Um, and another time when I was sitting in my preacher's chair reading uh, my Bible, the, the name of the quilt just came to me. I heard it holy, holy, holy. And I laughed out loud. I'm like, okay, Lord. <laughs> but I couldn't use his holy. So I just named it holy, H-O-L-E-Y, holy, holy, uh, to uh, just depict that they were circles within the quilt. And on the lower right, you can see my mother standing in front of that quilt, which was on the wall in my home. Her quilt, Rugged Cross, was uh, another time where we uh, talked first by phone, and then uh, in this case, I actually went to her house. She was making a quilt, and she called me and said, Sylvia, you need to come and see what I made. So I'm like, what is it, Mom? She said, it's the quilt, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> and she said, well, you got to see what it is. <laughs> so I jumped in my car, and at that time, I lived about three miles from her, ran to her house, and on the bed, where we make our quilts or lay out our quilts was this quilt, Rugged Cross. She called it Rugged Cross. Uh, um, and she was excited about it because she was surprised that it was a cross after she had put it together. So sometimes when you're making quilts, you're just surprised at, at what, the, uh, what the result is. And you're happy about it most times. So Holy, Holy, Holy and Rugged Cross are two quilts that my mother and I uh, made in our separate homes and on our beds. This quilt is one that my mother made. Uh, it's made out of double knit. It belonged to my brother, Michael. And if you look at the image on the right, you'll see that it is in the background of a magazine called Lee Magazine. This magazine uh, had the best article about my mother. And from it, I learned more about my mother uh, by reading that article uh, than, I, than I had previously known. Uh, it talked about her life as a child, uh, being a young mother, having to make quilts to keep her kids warm and sometimes cover the floor and to put up to the windows to keep the wind out. There's that resilient Moselle Benson again. And um, I just so appreciate uh, uh, Lee Magazine. And they, they call my mama a genius. She is. 
and to call my mama a treasure, and she is. And as you saw on the uh, National Endowment for the Arts uh, uh, Award, she is a treasure, not only in Auburn, over like a Waverly and Lee County, but also in the nation. So this is uh, a quote that my mother made, but this article in this magazine, Lee Magazine in 2008, was what made that quilt so special to me. This quilt called Blacks and White Together is another quilting uh, a lesson. My mother had left the, the fabric on the sewing machine in the studio and I was living with her at the time and I was, thought I was gonna surprise her and put it quilt together and so she would be proud of me for doing it, but well, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so when she came out of her garden into the studio, she told me what to do. Uh, she told me how to lay the strips side by side and make sure they were long enough. And then if they weren't long enough, add another piece and if make sure it was wide enough to cover the bed. And if it wasn't wide enough, you add a, another strip. So when it was done, it fit. Um, I would guess a regular size bed because uh, mama had a bed in the studio that she used uh, to, to lay out a quilt so that quilt fit that bed so we kind of knew it was big enough and it was also the first quilt that hung in an exhibit where we were um, quilters exhibiting exhibiting together so this is the first quilt that hung in an exhibit where I was with my mother now this quilt was also made in that same studio the Moselle Gunson Quilt Studio, which was built by Auburn University design build graduate students and undergraduate students in the College of Building Sciences. But anyway, if you look in the background, you can see all of uh, Mama's quilting supplies. Kind of reminds me of a room in my house. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we were asked by Alabama uh, Public TV to make and donate a quilt for fundraising and mom agreed to do it and I I was ecstatic I'm like yes we can do this together but what we decided to do after we uh, pulled together the materials that we had was to make a double-sided quilt and the front side uh, which is the quilt image on the right with the red square in the uh, center is what I call Moselle's side uh, my mama's side and then the back side I thought I would take some of the same fabrics from the front of the quilt and just make a cross and put it on the back and I can tell you we were at least I was in the flow when that quilt was made it came together perfectly and once it was uh, placed on uh, the auction site uh, and the auction ended that quilt became um, a part of the collection of uh, Dr. Maude Walman. She was happy to get it and I was happy that uh, she got it so we would know where it is. So that's prayers and blessing. This quilt is the one that was in the lap, uh, in my mother's lap uh, in the National Endowment for the Arts official photo. Uh, Mama wanted to donate a quilt to Auburn University and uh, this is the one that she chose. Well, actually, it was probably only the one, one of the ones that she had left because when the, the students and professors and uh, um, community people uh, built the studio and the house for Mama, she gave a quilt to practically everybody who came out there. So she didn't have any left after the house was built except. Uh, uh, this one and she wanted to give it to Auburn. So we contacted uh, the, the director at the Julie Collins uh, Smith Museum of Fine Art and uh, made it known to her that mama wanted to donate a quilt and she said yes. So we took it to the museum and the picture on the right shows my mama and me standing next to the quilt during an exhibit at the museum. And the quilt on the lower right side of the screen is called Three Crosses Two. 
I just made it a couple of years ago because I wanted to do a reproduction of that quote. So I just found uh, some silk in my stash that had been uh, given to me by a friend. And because I couldn't find the same kind of fabrics that mama had in her quilt, I just kind of made the color scheme similar and called it a reproduction quilt. And I called the quilt Three Crosses Two. I said all that to say this. I loved making quilts with my mother. I loved being her apprentice. And when I saw this certificate that you see here uh, on your left, that uh, she had been recognized by uh, the Smithsonian and given the, the certificate as an appreciation for that, I, I was just in awe. And then recently, at last year, I'll say, I also received um, a document <laughs> from the uh, Smithsonian uh, as a part of a marketing uh, uh, exhibit. Uh, at one of the uh, museums, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I used the quilting skills, the sewing skills that I got from my mother and uh, from a dream, from visions in my head, made a quilt block that looked like the shape of the Smithsonian's 19th and newest museum, uh, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. So I called the quilt and <laughs> Here again, this is one of those times when the name of the quote just came to me. I'm like, thank you, Lord. It was Tears of a Crown because the, if you've seen the museum and if you read the literature on it, you see that it's basically three tiers uh, and it's shaped like a crown on a wooden statue that's part of the uh, exhibit in the museum. So I was just flabbergasted and honored to know that I had kind of followed in my mother's footsteps. We have both been recognized uh, by the Smithsonian for our, our sewing and, and, and quilting accomplishments. And this all started from my mother, she said, when she was a child. She said her mother, Cleo, taught her to quilt. And this quilt that you see here on the screen uh, is from uh, the collection of quilts at uh, Souls Grown Deep. I was given the privilege to, to see quilts that were made by my grandmother and uh, my Aunt Lilybell, my mother's oldest sister. Uh, I used this quilt and zoomed in on it and pulled out images of the stars and I just call them Cleo stars. And um, this is how my mother got her start uh, uh, quilting. And you will see from looking at this quilt that the kinds of quilt that my mother made and, and the kind of quilting that she was taught was probably um, a little bit different. But now I'm going to take you through some quilts made through five generations, beginning with Cleo Fierce Stevens, my mother's mother. And this uh, quilt shows um, what look like stars. I don't know the official name for them, but I just call them Cleo's stars. And these are some of my mother's quilts. On the right is um, a quilt that is currently at the American Folklife Museum, but it is also featured on the cover of a book by Dr. Maude Wallman, Signs and Symbols, African Images in African American History. The quilt in the middle is called Shark Teeth. Mama doesn't usually name her quilt, but she named this one. Uh, and she called it Shark Teeth, and it is currently in the collection at the Alabama Department of Archives and History. The quilt on the right with the yellow and pink, bright blue, bold colors in it is at the Montgomery Museum of Fine Art. Um, someone there in uh, Montgomery uh, had one of my mother's quilts and probably some others, but this one was donated to the Montgomery Museum of, of, of Fine Art. And here are some images I collected off of the internet and from anywhere else I could find of Moselle Benson quilts. 
Uh, the one in the middle belonged to my brother Terry, and I have it here in my house. He has let me keep it for a while. I'll give it back. Uh, but the other uh, images are quilts that my mother have made through uh, the years. She taught me uh, her technique. Uh, I understand it, but at the same time, I use my own interpretation um, to make quilts. These two quilts are called Alabama Soil. The first one I made from fabric that I found in my mother's studio, I was uh, wanted to make an Alabama quilt and I just went through looking for anything that looked like dirt or was dirty uh, so I could make a quilt uh, depicting the state of Alabama uh, in earth colors. Um, and in looking for an, uh, an image to uh, draw the shape of the state, I learned that Alabama has an official soil. And those colors in the quilt kind of remind me of the colors that I saw uh, online of the official soil for the state of Alabama. And then I wanted to make another one. And if you can re recall the quilt that was on the table in the video with mom and me in her studio, this is that quilt. Um, I used the great seal of the state of Alabama as the inspiration for the colors in the quilt. Uh, and in it, you will find a heart, the heart of Dixie, which is kind of where Montgomery is. And then there's a cowrie shell, a small cowrie shell in there that shows where in Lee County um, those quilts were made. These are a couple of other quilts that I'm really proud of. I had a friend and her husband who were volunteers for volunteers in but why you want me to bring you back, Sylvia? I'm like, bring me fabric. And she said, well, if I bring you fabric, you have to make a quilt for me. So, and then she told me, and I want the quilt to be named Colors of Africa. This is before I saw the fabric. This is before uh, she gave me the fabrics to make the quilt. But in my mind, Colors of Africa uh, is what inspired me to make these small applique motifs of the continent uh, and in the center some other motifs that represents the Peace Corps, uh, the shape of the country where she lived, uh, and um, an ostrich egg which was a significant artifact in Botswana. And the quilt on the right is uh, a quilt I made from the um, the Tears of a Crown tribute quilt block that uh, uh, I dreamed and designed and made. I was just really proud that that all came together uh, as a quilt. And the other quilt that I make, <laughs> that I love to make, are love quilts. Uh, if you look at the top of the slide under the initial G, you will see a postage stamp. And that was part of my inspiration for making these love quilts the way I did it. Uh, the, the, the thought initially occurred when I was reading the scriptures and I had done a search on the word love and there are a lot of scriptures in the Bible about love and, I'm, and I remember thinking there ought to be some way to make love into a quilt and when I saw the postage stamp I'm like this is it. Um, the two uh, smaller quilts on the lower right of the screen were uh, donated uh, to the Auburn University Women's Resource Center. Uh, the first one I named Love One Another, um, and the second one I donated is called It's All About Love. They're about a 24 by 24 inch square, but I love those love quilts, and um, I continue to make them. These three quilts were made by Moselle's uh, grandchildren. Um, the pink Cadillac quilt on the right was made by my daughter Corey. She actually made that quilt with mama, her grandma Moselle, at the studio in Waverly. The quilt in the center uh, is made by my daughter Stephanie. Uh, it's probably a TBQ quilt also, but <laughs> <laughs> she was an apprentice uh, quilter, my apprentice quilter, uh, and she had to learn to sew and put the quilt together 
all at the same time. She has told me that quilting is not her thing, but this is her quilt. And the quilt on the right, I am especially proud of because my uh, nephew, Moselle's grandson, Christopher, made this quilt uh, to honor her. And I just put it, I just called it a quilt for Moselle because that's what he said he wanted to do. And if you look in the quilt, you see the lady with the black and white Afrocentric print dress on, that's Moselle Benson. And if you look at, uh, further a little further off to the right you'll see <laughs> uh my uh, uh nephew uh applique of the quilt house and uh, studio and there's a red brick road leading up to the house so i was really proud of chris he still sews and he still makes things today he's he's quite creative and very prolific so these Moselle Benson uh, grandchildren made these three quilts. These next quilts were made by Moselle's great granddaughters and they represent the fifth generation of quilters uh, in the Moselle lineage. Uh, the two mini quilts were made by her oldest two daughters, Sana and Rahma. They were, and, I, and I call them mini quilts. They will probably fit a doll bed, but they were their first quilts and they enjoyed making them and I enjoyed teaching them. The quilt on the right uh, was made by Aya uh, and she wanted to make a quilt that would fit her bed and she wanted it extra long so that when she grows up, she was 11 at the time, that when she grows up, it can still fit her bed and when she goes to college, she can take it with her. Well, Aya is also my quilting apprentice here in the state of Maryland uh, under their uh, folk arts apprenticeship uh, program, Maryland Tradition Apprenticeship Program. So now you've looked at five generations of quilts uh, made by family, mem family members of, of Moselle Benson. And this quilt that you're looking at here, which was also the same quilt on the uh, cover for the Facebook uh, discussion page, is called the Moselle Benson Moselle S. Benson Legacy Quilt. The Alabama Folklife Association asked me or commissioned me to make this quilt. Uh, well, they commissioned me to make a quilt that honors my mother. And I had had this thought in the back of my mind for a long time. So I printed out quilts made by my mother and some of the quilts that you have just seen, some of the quilts that I made, quilts made by her granddaughters or grand granddaughters and they're all included in this quilt. This quilt has 52 blocks of images of quilts. Uh, 23 of the quilts belong to um, Moselle Benson, belong to mama, and the rest of them are divided up among us. If it's not a quilt, the blocks are pieced together so that they can form a, a quilt block. And sometimes there are quilt blocks there are quilts within the quilt block. So this is a quilt of quilted <laughs> quilts. And it represents um, five generations of quilt makers uh, in the Moselle Stevens, Benson, I'm sorry, Moselle, Mer Moselle Stevens, Mer Benson family. <laughs> I should get that right. I should just say Moselle Benson, but those names are important for all of us. The Stevens family, uh, the Murph family, and, and the Benson family. I, after this quote was made and uh, given to uh, the Alabama State Council on the Arts, uh, I have uh, since decided that I could use it to to provide some tips for us now, for the people of America, for quilters and quilt lovers and quilt friends, to get us through these troubling times. And I and I took I took the tips from the quilts that you've seen and the quilts that are included in this uh, legacy quilt. Um, there were 27 quilts in this legacy quilt. Quilt. There were 27 quilt blocks in this legacy quilt that had crosses on them. So I use that as messages from the quilt. 
so the tips from the cross quote would be to get to know God. And these are some things that mama uh, taught me as well. She said, you need to know God and you need to know his son, Jesus. And another thing she taught me was to remember to ask God for whatsoever, no matter what you need, what you want, what you think you want. If, you, if it is a desire in your heart, just remember, ask God. And also the cross reminds us that God loves you, that God loves us. And the other quotes within uh, the presentation and also that are included in this legacy quilt were love quilt. It, and the tips that come to mind from the love quilt is to remember that God is love. And during this resilient time, you need to know that God loves you, you're not alone. Uh, and also we can be reminded to love your neighbors, the ones that are close to you, the ones that are far away from you. Uh, our neighbors could be the next state. Our neighbors could be the next country. Uh, and since now we're all global neighbors during this, uh, during this time. And we're to, to love one another. And, um, and that might be really um, pertinent at this time when we are all close together in our homes with one another is to remember uh, to love one another. And uh, while I was doing this presentation, I also remembered some things that mama used to say to me. She, she was a giver and she told me that you should always give from what you have, give from what you already have. And another thing she taught me was to believe and don't doubt. And I, uh, that's one of my mantras. And I think it could be helpful for us now to believe that we will get through this, believe that we will uh, come out better uh, in, in a, a many, many instances and believe that all things happen for the good for those who love the Lord. Um, these are some things that she taught me and maybe somehow it can be applicable uh, to your life. And the other thing she used to say was pray and pray some more and some more. And I would offer uh, these tips for people to consider uh, in their lives as we uh, navigate these, um, these troubling times uh, today. And, and knowing my mother and her life and how she approached life and how she never gave up, how she would uh, continue in spite of dif difficulty, I just said that she just lived a resilient lifestyle. Uh, and I think she passed some of that on to uh, us as a family, uh, close family and extended family. And that resilience is just in your DNA. I, I, I really believe that there's something about us as uh, the Stevens family, the Murph family, the Benson family. Uh, there's something about us as Americans where we just keep going. And that causes me to say that the resilience is in our DNA. And as a final note, I just wanted to offer up uh, prayers and blessings to the quilters who have uh, come to the forefront uh, during these troubling times and just say blessings to all the quilters across America uh, and actually across the globe who have shared their patterns and created videos so that quilters and others as well have stitched thousands of masks and medical garments for family members, for friends, for healthcare workers, uh, people in the medical field, public service professionals and Americans in service to others everywhere in the United States, in our homes, uh, across the globe. And I say, God bless you. And this is one, <laughs> this image is a, a, a quilt that I made for one of my granddaughters and in the spirit of resilience just because we love one another. Uh, quilters have made masks, quilters are still making masks. And with that, I say, remain resilient. Thank you, Sylvia, for a fabulous presentation. You must know that everyone in Alabama swelled with pride when we hear these stories and see these photographs of you and your mom together um, and because of the national and international reputation that you've achieved. 
Um, and so we just uh, really appreciate um, all that you have to say. And we have a couple of questions uh, from some oh. of your friends in Alabama. Uh, <laughs> who, uh, 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 certainly, uh, you mentioned Joey Brackner at the yes. on the Arts. And so Joey has this question. Um, he says that he sees you as sort of living in two worlds. One, one foot in tradition, but yes. then with the other foot in your own creative expression. And so he wonders, is that how you see yourself? I do. And I see myself that way because I make quilts the traditional way, which is how my mother made them. Uh, you've got a top that's pieced together. I still do that, so that's traditional. Uh, most of my quilts are in blocks and squares and rectangles, like my mama taught me. And then um, it, it's, it's three layers, the top, the middle batting, and the back. But at the same time, she gave me the freedom to do what I wanted to do. She said, if you make a quilt, however you make it, somebody else is going to like it too. So... I used that freedom uh, uh, to make quilts. Mama taught me to sew, but I sewed mostly uh, for myself to make clothes for myself as the oldest of 10 children. You know, they were kind of hard to come by then. So I took home economics classes in, in school and sewing in classes at Auburn University uh, to learn to sew. And I used those sewing skills to make quilts. And the other thing is at Auburn, I also thought to become, uh, an artist. I was going to take art classes, but at the time, the only way you could take art classes was to declare art your major. Well, I couldn't figure out how to make a living with art, so I chose journalism. <laughs> I could spell. I could write. So uh, um, I have taken the sewing skills that my mother taught me, plus the traditional quilting skills that my mother taught me to make things that I see in my mind, or make things that I dream. And they're more modern. Um, or I, maybe I should say they're just different from her type of uh, uh, quilting uh, that you see in her quilt tops. So Joey's right. He hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Joey's always right. <laughs> got another question uh, from your friend Ann Kimsey at the Thanks ah! New York. Um, and she's interested in some of reflection from you uh, on being a part of the Alabama Folk Arts Apprenticeship Program, because you are a wonderful example of someone who is bridging the gap between generations. So can you talk about the role of that apprenticeship program? It was key to me. I do not know that I would have been um, as involved with my mother in, in quilting and making quilts um, if it were not for the apprenticeship program because mama said she would do it and if she says she's going to do it she is going to make it happen so because she made a commitment to the alabama state council on the arts to teach me how to quilt <laughs> i made it a commitment to to devote any time that she was free to learn those skills. Uh, and we did that for three consecutive years. And I learned a lot. The way mama taught me to quilt mostly was, I had an idea about how I wanna make something and she would tell me how to do it. And then she would be on her way out to the garden. She knew I could sew and she knew I would put it together. And she had taught me how to make a quilt her way. So um, that was very liberating. Uh, her technique for quilting uh, was just so, just do whatever you want to do. If it fits in the quilt, you put it in. It Does it have to match? No. And, but that was a little difficult for me to, to do. Uh, and then after um, uh, I learned mom's technique and documented in this Moselle Benson seven easy quilting steps, uh, I, I kept doing it. I just loved it. And then and uh, Kimsey asked me if I wanted to teach um, some other members of my family. I jumped at the chance. 
So I was able to teach my mother, I'm sorry, my, um, my mother's technique to my daughters. So they all, I have two daughters and they both know how to make a Moselle Benson quilt. The oldest one learned directly from my mother and the youngest one, uh, uh, Stephanie, uh, was, was who I taught. And then I taught uh, a couple of her grand nieces uh, to make quilts as my apprentice. And uh, my nephew, Chris, was my last uh, apprenticeship under the Alabama State Council on the Arts. And he's still making quilts too. He loves it. Uh, so the Alabama State Council on the Arts apprenticeship program was what um, allowed me to sit at my mother's knee and her give me her undivided attention uh, on, on several occasions, from whether I was at her house or my house, to learn how to quilt the Moselle Benson way and to uh, teach it to other family members who are also still quilting, including my granddaughter here in, in Maryland, where she is an apprentice on the Maryland State Council on the Arts Apprenticeship Program. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. So uh, we may have other questions in the future, even though because of technical difficulties, we can't be on Facebook Live right now. This video will eventually be on Facebook and we invite anyone who is watching to submit a question in the comments box and we will get that question to Sylvia and we can assure you she will be delighted to give you an answer directly. Absolutely. That's right. and, I love quilting and talking about quilting, so I will answer them. Well, and you do it quite well. And we want everyone to have an open invitation as soon as we are able in the future to reschedule our quilt symposium. Um, we will have Sylvia in person. And so everyone can meet <laughs> Sylvia um, and see some of these quilts uh, uh, up close um, and, and be able to spend time with you. And so we look forward in the future to having you back to Alabama. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you.